Okay, we're going to uh, sing Rejoice and Be Glad. You better be glad. <laughs> Rejoice and be glad, the Redeemer has come. Go look on his cradle, his cross and his tomb. Sound his praises, tell the glory of him who was slain. Sound his praises, tell the gladness, he lived again. Rejoice and be glad, it is sunshine at last. The clouds have departed, the shadow of her path. Sound his praises, tell the story of him who was slain. Sound his praises, tell the gladness, he lived the dead. Rejoice and be glad, for the blood hath been shed. Redemption is finished, the price hath been paid. Sound his praises for the glory of him who was slain. Sound his praises, hell with gladness, he liveth again. Rejoice and be glad, now the pardon is free. The just for the unjust has died on the tree. Sound his praises, tell with clowns, of him who was slain. Sound his praises, tell with gladness, he liveth again. Rejoice and be glad for the Lamb that was slain. For death is triumphant and liveth again. Sound his praises, tell the glory of him who was slain. Sound his praises, tell with gladness, he liveth again. He liveth again. Heavenly Father, <clears throat> we come together to rejoice, to be glad, to worship you, to share with one another our love and your love. And we ask that you give us wisdom, help us to know the good things that we can do through you. And we pray for those who are in need and we, um, we, we want to do what you can help us do to make our people stronger. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I will sing of my Redeemer and his wondrous love to me. On the cruel cross he suffered from the curse to set me free. Sing, oh, sing of my Redeemer with his bloody words to sing. On the cross, he sealed my pardon, let the death be free. I will tell the wondrous story, how my lost estate to save, and his boundless love and mercy, be the ransom freely gave. Sing, oh sing, a mighty neighbor. His body purchased me. Oh, I see so 
of my pardon. Save the dead and make me free. I will praise my dear Redeemer, His triumphant power I'll tell, how the victory He giveth, over sin and death and hell. Sing, O team of my Redeemer, in His blood, for His peace. On the cross He sealed my pardon, made the dead. I will sing of my Redeemer and His heavenly love is He, who from death to heaven told me, Son of God with Him to be. Sing, O oh, sing of my Redeemer, with His purchased me. On the cross He made my pardon, made my death and made me free. Every one of you with us here today. Good morning. Now you can hear me a little bit. And if you walk in and grab your bulletin, you'll see that it is super easy to follow along with today's triumphal entry uh, day that we celebrate of Palm Sunday. This is the big week um, of there's like seven, at least seven events that takes place this week as what they call the Holy Week. And as, of course, one of them is the, we call the triumphal entry. Those of us who are worshiping God, we know it is a triumphal entry into the story. And so I want to welcome you this day. But you can always take off that little end piece. That end piece holds, your, holds all your announcements. It especially has the uh, Wednesday Bible study. We are in the book of Mark. And or I know we're in. We might even be close to getting to the end of four, maybe. We're in there. We have great discussion. And so there's uh, services downstairs that connect with services online. And so online, you can take your phone if you have internet, and all you got to do is type in th that one blue line, and that will automatically put you in the Bible study as we join along together. There's about, t on an average, 12 so it kind of fluctuates nine to 12, nine to 12 people that gather for that worship service because we worship together, we go into scriptures together, and we are in the book of Mark right now. And so um, are we, do we're doing this Wednesday's okay? This Wednesday is okay. That's part of this special week that we're having. We are having Bible study on Wednesday. You're free to join along with that. And as um, as I talk about the Sunday service at 1045, next week is Easter. This is Palm Sunday, makes next week Easter week. And so we will be celebrating the risen Savior as we do every day, but we have a special day that we really uh, have a great time together. Also, the kids are doing Kids Zone. They are doing the same thing today. They are learning about the triumphal entry story. They have a ton of games to go with it that talk about seeing the focus of Jesus and what he had as he came into Jerusalem. And that is what they are doing. There are no birth, but I'll tell you what, Erwin, you were on the list last week. We had, Erwin, has, he's been away for a little bit. It's good to see him this morning. And he talked about that triumphal ride, I think. My yellow donkey. <laughs> Erwin, it is so. We have been praying for you. You're on the prayer list, which is on the back of the announcements. But we honored your birthday last week. Happy birthday to you, okay? 74, 74 young. 74 young. That's what we all got to do. Take care of ourselves. It is so good to see you. So there are no other birthdays this week, but they're coming up down the road. So it is good to have it. Um, if you're looking for a little fun and a little uh, uh, stupidity sometimes, I do a, a little bit called Hello Again Wednesday. And it's just some things. I talked about my road to recovery a little bit and then talk about a whole bunch of other things. So, hey, go ahead and you can look at that. I'm on Facebook. It's just Hello Again Wednesday. Dial that in. You'll find me. Okay. 
And I believe we have one more Pathways book. I think I saw one more out there. If you'd like to have that, you can. And so always join in on our, on our uh, websites, if you would. But And you know what? We do have it to where we're online right now, but we also have individuals join via the phone. And so we pay for that so that they can join right along in. And there's are someone there right now, because I know, because it tells you, there are this many visitors right now as I'm plugging them in, and they are hearing. And so we welcome those that are listening. Let them know that we are praying for them also in some cases, okay, that have asked for prayer. As I welcome you, I also just remind you that we do have the offering plates in the front, the back there. And so what that does is it allows us to do things to where we can do ministry as a church right here. I thank you for your financial gifts because that's not just to, that's, not, that's not to like us. That's us giving of ourselves to God. And so um, let's continue to do that as we worship through not only ourselves, but our finances also. And we will continue to do ministry. It is so good to see you this morning. God bless you as we celebrate what Christ is doing for us. Okay. We are about to sing a song called Jesus Paid It All. And as we get ready to have prayer, know this triumphal entry we celebrate. He knew exactly what the plan was to sacrifice himself. And as it is said, Jesus paid it. We even sung the song. He paid it for us, paid it for our debts, for our sins to be forgiven. And with that, <clears throat> we should feel uh, such a joy to come to him in prayer, to ask God about the things that are on our heart, things that are troubling us, some, some things that we need healing, some things where we have financial things that are taking place in our lives. We have things. God knows everything about it. He has not forgotten, nor has he left us. As I said earlier, there are many things that are on our list, things that have happened through the week and and we want to continue to remember them in prayer. We have blessings. We have praise. If Erwin was on our list, we have praise as he's come into service this morning. There are others where um, situations have not gone the way that we want. And so we continue to pray for those families. Um, we uh, There's individuals that are on my heart that have left homes and gone somewhere else, but I do not stop praying for those individuals. And in a matter of kids. And so we continue to pray for the things that are on our list, for the, the, the missionaries over in Botswana, Africa, as they get ready to this holy week of celebrating Easter. Then there's others. And I, I'm just going to draw attention to one. It's such a, a hard thing that is happening. Two things are on my mind. There's the, the, the drug overdosing of individuals, and a lot of them are young kids. Our young people are going through some, some things the same thing we have gone through, but for some reason, there's, there's, there must not be a support mechanism or something, and kids are dying. And uh, Jaden, they had a day off, and when they came back to school that after that weekend, um, it was a long weekend, and one of her friends that sits by her in class had committed suicide. And so her heart was heavy, and, and so we're, I don't know the family. I don't even know the name of her friend. But I'm telling you what, when it's not just one that sees that one is missing. And so uh, we need to pray for our young people. And, and I would say this, especially Jade, and she's down there, downstairs. She's actually leading the kids zone and taking up the reins for the day for uh, Michelle. The, uh, half of my family is in Illinois right now, and they're visiting family. And so someone always steps up, and I'm thankful for God for that. But let's continue to pray for our young people as well as ourselves. If you have something that you would like to, uh, I, I pray for the church. I have my list, I, you know, but I pray for uh, sometimes specific things, and this is it. If you raise your hand, I remember you throughout the week especially, that there's something happening in your life. I don't, know, I don't need to know what it is, but I will especially pray for you on a daily basis, sometimes two and three times as I, as I talk to God a lot. 
So if you have something you would like me to pray for, I will continue. I will pray for you and you and on you. I will continue to pray for you, especially. I pray for the whole church. But this week, you guys are on my heart especially. And I try to remember quite often, uh, my God is good. There's nothing that he cannot do. So we put our hope and our faith in him as we come to sing this song before prayer. You ready to go? I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in thy all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. For now indeed I find thy power and thine alone. Change the leper spots and melt the heart of stone. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left the face and stain, he washed it white as snow. <laughs> For nothing good have I. Whereby thy grace to claim, I'll walk my garments white, the blood of Calvary's lamb. Jesus paid it all, all to deny. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. And when before the throne I stand in him complete, I will lay my duties down, down at Jesus' feet. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed the white as As a pastor, one of my prayers is that God would help individuals in such a way as they step in and, and do things for the church. And so as uh, I was talking in prayer about Jaden and then how she was going downstairs to kind of lead those kids in, in uh, kids' church, I also knew that when the clicker left that I was told 
couple of weeks ago, there's a gentleman that would like to slide in and learn how to click and do stuff for the media. And so God provides people. I want us to pray. God, we are so grateful for an opportunity to be together, to worship you, to worship the fact that your son Jesus died for us. Those are like the minimal words as we can express some kind of in our hearts in such a way where it just feels like we don't have enough to say back. But God, you are the one who provides for us in such a way that we can live because your son Jesus died for us. So we continue to worship you, God. We worship you in such a way that when we gather together, we sing these praises to you. We think about the things within our heart where I have a reason to praise. God has done this in my life to provide for this, to show me this way. God, we praise you for the steps and for the actions and for the presence of you within our lives. We also come together, God, to lift up our concerns of our brothers and sisters and even outside of the realms of our brothers and sisters as it touches upon people, God, we pray for one another. Let us never stop being a church that prays for one another, God. And you know everything on the list. We don't have to go through piece by piece. God, we just ask this one thing, that you help us have an understanding of the will that you have, the path that you have. And if there's a spot in any of these requests or any of these things that are taking place within our lives, God, that you want us to be the one that has an action within it, God, we ask for your Holy Spirit to guide and direct us. God, we ask that you'll be with the words that are spoken in Scripture that our hearts might be open in such a way to gather a greater understanding of your presence coming into Jerusalem as we celebrate Palm Sunday. God, we ask also that you'll be with the finances of the church. You know exactly what it takes to, to do the ministry that is yours, not ours. We ask, God, that we are always in your will with the things that we are doing in such a way, God, that it just um, allows your Holy Spirit to add to the kingdom. God, help us in as we give, that we give of our hearts and not of a, 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 an absolute that we have to. God, we ask that you not only uh, take what we give, but we give it to honor you and give you glory. God, we also ask that you be with the things that are taking place within our church and around our church. We are grateful for those that are watching out for individuals and watching out for the things that take place here, God. We also know that there's some that we, um, again, have difficulties in finding the location of where they're at, God. We ask for an opening in that area. God, we are also asking that as the church, we can reach out to others. That your kingdom will be increased, not for our glory, but only your glory. And that lives will be changed in such a way that it's a, a life-changing thing daily for us and them. God, we are grateful again. I cannot say it enough to come and praise you. Thank you, God, for what you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. I have to just turn it on. Good morning. I'm going to try. I'm going to try this one. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading is from Psalms 130, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 8. Oh, out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I do hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning. Yes, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord.
For with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is abundant redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Are you redeemed? I'm redeemed. <laughs> I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed from the darkness of the night that so quickly enveloped my soul. In my heart there has been raised a I'm redeemed, praise the Lord. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am saved from all sin and I'm walking in my life. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm redeemed by the blood from the power of the grave and the victory I have over death. Oh, that wonderful blood, how I take the power to save when I plunge in the fathomless death. Praise the Lord, I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am saved from all sin and I'm walking in the light. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. From all sin, and I'm walking in the light. And it's clear, it is moving the way. I know there will be sin for the terror of the night, nor the sorrow that quiet by day. I'm redeemed, Lord. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am saved from all sin, and I'm walking in the light. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. There's more. The redeemed that shall walk in the pathway of the just, which shine brighter and brighter each day. They shall sing and shall talk with the bright angelic host, where all sorrow and sighs away. I'm redeemed. Praise the Lord. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. From all sin, and I'm walking in the light. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Our New Testament reading is from Titus, and if you want to turn in your in your Bibles, it's on page one one seven zero. Titus 1170, and I'm reading verses, uh, well, for chapter 2, verses 11 through 15. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Speak these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you.
there are things that excite me. And a lot of it has to do with my walk with the Savior. And I hope you guys have that same thought process. Pastor Mark was talking about how we needed to come in praising and se celebrating the fact that it is uh, for us a Palm Sunday celebration. Um, as I'm uh, walking in and hearing individuals, you know, and saying hellos and stuff like that before service, uh, <laughs> Erwin made my heart really jump because he talked about, I thought today would be a great day to ride in. And I'm sitting there thinking, I already had hope rides in. I already had it. And so I was excited to hear that other people have the same thought process. You know, it is good to come into the house. It is good to come to God's house and worship him, see friends and family, and just enjoy the day together. Church, church is not a uh, a time of, oh, I got to go. It's that one hour time. It, church should be, man, I get to see people I haven't seen all week or I haven't seen for, uh, you know, since Wednesday or whatever. And a time to gather and go, hey, how's things going? Never walk away when you ask how things are going. And so pay attention and listen to one another. And to me, it brings that celebration of church. And uh, so, but this morning, <clears throat> I want to delve into you know what? Do you ever wonder if you were in the times of the Savior and it was this time that was coming up? Obviously, you had no idea what was planned ahead, that the individuals that probably were crying, that were saying, Hosanna in, the, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Stuff that they were, they were shouting was actually quotes from the Old Testament. And so those quotes sometimes got turned around, maybe not by everyone, but got turned around enough in the crowd to crucify the Savior days later, that there would be uh, a time where he gathered with his, his 12 and he took a, 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 a towel, wrapped it around his waist and, and washed their feet, including Judas and my Savior knowing exactly the plan. And yet he still did it. He still rode, see, I want us to grasp, he still rode into Jerusalem knowing that he and uh, you know what i loved about jesus during these these days that would lead up to the crucifixion and the resurrection that even though he knew how what the you know if we knew what the end result was going to be that i would rise again and death would be conquered satan would have no power i would be the one who proves all authority over everything if i knew that was the end result you know w wouldn't things be a little bit different and i'm going to say this at the beginning because i might miss it at the end that's how we should be you do know the end result the end result is if you say jesus is my lord and savior the end result is heaven for all eternity and no one on this planet, no one can pray you out of heaven, nor can they pray you into heaven. They can pray for you to follow the Savior to walk into heaven, but they can't get you in or get you out. It is you and your walk. So know what the end result is and rejoice in it. There's a few things uh, before. I'm actually going to not tell the story until the end today. And so I had... Uh, had heard this long ago and I'd seen it. And as I began to study about, see, I view it as hope rides in. And, and I'm going to tell you why in just, a, in just a little bit. But it started with one of these things. I, I have uh, seen pictures, replicas and stuff of it. Um, at, the story goes that one time it was in a Cincinnati museum and it was a painting called The Chess Game. Now, I might be wrong. Here's the problem, ready? And, and this is why I'm going to tell you, when you do the internet, be very careful because everything on the internet is not true, okay? So it's hard when you're see. I have read many different versions of this story, but the meat of it goes like this. There's the painting of the, the chess game. It is of the devil and a man playing chess. And as they're getting toward the end of the game, the way, um, and I read a story, so I'm going to tell you how one of the ones that I came across, especially because it had names. They say that the, the, the gentleman that was up against the devil 
for his soul in this game. It's a, how, how many have ever heard that Charlie Daniels back in Pastor Mark? I talk, talking about the 70s. Back in, I, it was the 70s, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe the late 70s, Charlie Daniels came out with that song, The Devil Went Down to Georgia. It was a story about the devil wanting the soul of Johnny, I think it was, who could play the fiddle. And the fiddle won. In this story, it's almost the same kind of thought process. There's this man playing chess. He loved chess, and he's playing chess against the devil for his soul. In a story that I read, it was a man by the name of Faust, and he's playing for it. And the way the picture is depicted is it depicts this, it depicts this character of Satan with a sly little grin. You know, how, you know when, sometimes when you have too much pride and you're a winner, you, you get cocky. And it was that kind of a smile. He knew he was going to win. He had come to a place where, uh, you know, in a matter of moves, he has checkmated the opponent, which was Faust. And Faust, in the painting, the way the, 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 the artist had depicted it, Faust was having a, a move he was about to make, yet his face presented the struggle of failure. He was going to lose in his mind no matter what move he made. That's how the painting was depicted. For years, it hung in these galleries, and chess players, it said in other stories, they would come and try and look at the chess moves. That's how chess players are. Now, you know what it reminds me of? Ready? The newspaper. You ever open up the newspaper? And there was things that were in there. My favorite, the comics. And not too far from the comics was, ready? A chess, at least in, in, in Rockford, Illinois, the Rockford paper always had a chess game. And so it would make, it would do the moves. And so you'd have to wait for the next day to see what the next move was. So it, it's easy to understand that you can go to a, a, a picture and go, what's the next move? And people would do that, and they would all walk away saying to themselves, the devil is going to be the winner in this game. That's how chess players are. There was also a man named Paul Morphy. Paul Morphy had said in another, in the same story, but in another little line, Paul Murphy was a champion chess player in the 19th century, the late 19th century. They say he lived down in, in, in uh, let me look, because it's Louisiana. What's that thing? The hurricane. The hurricane hit them. New Orleans. He lived in New Orleans. Thank you. He lived in New Orleans, Louisiana. And, at, you know, as a, ch a champion, undefeated chess player, they asked him to come to Cincinnati and see this picture and say what his thoughts were. So he went up to Cincinnati, and he's looking, and of course, you know, they, they, the story goes, man, he looked for five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes. He looked for a very long time. They're, they're trying to make this climatic thing. And it is kind of climatic, because I just look at it as a man who understood chess and what the plan was. He's looking at it, and at, the, at, at, at a moment in time, he goes, you know what? The young man with his hand on a move needs to make that move. That is the move that will win the game. And sure enough, he proved it. He had a chessboard set up and he, had, and he showed exactly how the move would make it to where the devil would lose. And the, the one who was distraught, the one who thought failure was coming, actually, if he followed the plan, he would win. And so that's how the chess player how they tell the story of the chess player. I tell you that because I want you to have this understanding that, you know, when things seem difficult, when things seem hard in our life, if we follow God's plan, we are the winners. I Man, there's stuff like that takes me back to uh, uh, the 80s. I'm going to be very uh, what, nostalgic. Takes me to the 80s. I, had, I knew a band by the name of DeGarmo and Key, and um, one of the, the lead singer was actually a, a, a worship pastor down in the Nashville area, I believe it was. And he, he had passed away. He had, had a, a disease, so in his 50s he had passed away. But I'll tell you what, they had a song. It was called, ready? Oh, all of the losers win, or only the losers win. And why is that? Because you lose yourself to gain life in Christ. Okay? And so the, to have this thought process of things are so bad, no, nope, because you win. Know what the end result is. You win win the bible ready the bible right here 
There's some in front of you. If you want, you can look at Mark 11, because I will get to that, verses 1 through 11. But the Bible, if you take the time to read it, I know people that read it cover to cover. There's some ladies that I know that are meeting on Thursdays, and they, they are going cover to cover with the scriptures. And it's funny, kind of, I, I, you know, of course, I'm a guy, so I don't go, but I get to hear some of the, the stories, and I'm like, yeah, that's a good one, huh? <laughs> How'd you ladies discuss that one, you know? There's some stories within the scriptures. God has many characters. And if we realize that what takes place in here and don't, and don't become deniers or, or argumentative, just realize this is what's laid out for us through thought. And I'll tell you what, if you come to Bible study on Wednesday, you'll find out there's many things that are very traditional, very passed down through the ages. And Pastor Mark and Cindy do a, a, a great job of leading us through cover to cover. You know, we're in the book of Mark. But I want you to understand that there's many things that take place that we go, wow, I, I can't believe that happened. People will argue with you because there are brutal murders in the scriptures. There are, there are uh, uh, sexual affairs in the scriptures. There's manipulation of people and the things that they, ha they have and do. There's, there's, there's extortion in the scriptures. And all, what that does for me, all right, are you ready? Reminds me that we live in a world that is full of sin. And God has so graciously shown us Yes, it is sin. It's not, it's not your problem alone. Many people have gone through some of the things you have gone through, or you can kind of come close to the connection of it. But as God has placed those stories in there, he also placed uh, um, people to tell the truth so people will change their hearts. In Romans chapter uh, 3, 23, it, we are told of how this sinful world, world is so sinful that every one of us have sinned. So then you go, if you've all sinned, you fall short of the glory of God. That's the scripture. I want us to have this understanding because a lot of people go like this. Well, you know, it was only a little thing I did. Man, I'm a really good person. I only did a little thing. I, you know what? I'm going to tell you what. Sin is sin, no matter how you label it. You can label it whatever you want, but it's still sin. Once you come to that conclusion, you realize what you have to lose. Because what you keep as sin, it really does separate you from God. Why does it separate you from God? When you sin, you have a gut, that gut feeling. You have that, everyone has that conscience. Everyone knows right from wrong. And when you know right from wrong and you're doing wrong, you are choosing to try and separate yourself from God. And then it falls to me in this way with scripture. Do you realize that you cannot go anywhere on this planet or in space that will be away from God? Okay, so there's no escaping it. There's no running away from God. These are all the, the catchphrases that people have had. I'm running from God. You know, look at Jonah, ran from God. You know what? Guess what? God never left him, nor does he leave you. The problem is, though, if we remain doing the things that God does not like, the mistakes, the uh, uh, missing the mark, the sin, you, I'm telling you, there's so many labels. It's still sin, still missing the mark. It's still you against God. And what that leads to is what the world is. The world is, in Ephesians 2, 12, it says, the world is without hope and without God in the world. And by that, I'm telling you this. What it is is we think there's, there's people who, 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 who completely deny there's even God. So for them, in their mind, God is not in the world. Well, yeah, in their mind, God is not in the world. In their heart, God is not in the world. But does that make God not in the world? No, it does not. It just makes you not wanting God. Now, here's the good thing about God in the Bible, what he has done for us. He's also, in all of those things that seem so evil, he weaved in promises. God has always had a promise. And so um, I'm going to go with New Testament scriptures for a moment that, re that relate to Old Testament scriptures. And they're in Isaiah. I'm not going to, I, I, I already deleted, I didn't want to go into it, so I deleted the Isaiahs. But if you go, that means you go, I go read the whole book. Go read the whole book of Isaiah to find out what pastor's talking about. But in the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 12, we get an understanding of some of the promises. And it says this, and again, 
Isaiah says, so the writer in Romans is quoting Isaiah. Again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will spring up and one who will arise to rule over the nations. In him, this is in, in, in Romans, in him, the Gentiles will hope. There's one that is coming and even the Gentiles will have the opportunity they hope in what is coming. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 21, we have uh, uh, God's servant, Jesus. Starting in verse 15 in uh, Matthew 12, it says this. Aware of this, Jesus withdrew from the, that place. A large crowd followed him and he healed all who were ill. I love that part. Did you understand? Sometimes we race over scripture. He healed all who were ill. That's what this writer saw. This was to fulfill what? This was to fill what was spoken through the prophet. Anyone got a guess? Isaiah, I'll help you out. Here is my servant whom I have chosen, the one I love in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not quarrel or cry out. No one will hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out till he has brought justice through to victory. And I understand, you know, in the book of Isaiah, God, that God wasn't just going, hey, you know, I'm going to tell Isaiah. This is what I'm going to tell Isaiah. I'm going to tell him about this reed that, that will be bent, but it won't be broken. I'm going to tell Isaiah about this, this one whom I love, whom I've called upon. I'm going to tell Isaiah about the one I'm going to put the spirit on. I'm going to tell Isaiah about one who's going to lead through to victory. And then the only people that are going to be concerned about this scripture that I'm telling Isaiah are the Culver City Church of God in 2023. That's not how it went. <laughs> God spoke to Isaiah. Oh, man for a reason, so that the people in the time of Isaiah would have a hope. Now, we are blessed because after Isaiah, what, hundreds of years after Isaiah, you have, you have the writer of Romans. I, I don't know. The, you get, I'm telling you, come to Wednesday Night Bible said, Pastor Mark has all these. Uh, <laughs> I just go, you know, I know it's like a, a lot of years had passed, and the writer of Romans quoted Isaiah. God had placed a reason to quote the prophet so that others would find hope. And so as we sit here and read scripture day after day, I hope that we too will find the same hope that was passed down generation to generation. There is one. Now for us, it's this way. There is one who came who was unbroken. There was one who came who died on a cross and shed his blood and rose again defeating satan 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 i don't think satan ever smirked at jesus probably from that first time that they were face to face in the desert and, and jesus just slaughtered him with scripture <laughs> and so death came satan thought he had won but he didn't know what the plan was and jesus brought it through to victory so for us today we too can be the one with hope. When we speak of hope and desire, we have to go to the thought process of that end result that we'll be with Jesus forever, but it has to start with Jesus. Jesus was the sinless son of God, sinless, died on a cross, not for any crime he had committed, not for any sin he had done, not for any words that he had spoken that would go against God. Jesus Christ came. And that's why I kind of, as I was going through this, uh, this up to Easter, especially, was this thought process of how Christmas comes to Easter. Christ came to the earth to be born and be born as it was prophesied. One of my best ones, ready, was they told him it was in the city of Bethlehem. That's where he was born, you know. And so, as happened, then he grew up and he told us, especially in his, the times of his ministry, everything that pointed so that we would come and worship God. That was his whole mission, come to God. And then he died for us so that we could have, because we're not, we're, we try our best but sometimes we still have our, our difficulties, our problems, our mistakes, our sins. Yet we still have one who died with his blood to forgive us instantly. And he rose from the dead. 
in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1, it talks about Christ. He is our hope. In Titus, in the scriptures that we had this morning, in Titus chapter 2, it talks about the blessed hope. Man, I love, see, if you really slow down and look at scripture, we went from, you know, he's, he's our hope to understanding he's greater than just, he's the blessed hope. He is the one that is anointed by God. And not only was Isaiah talking about the Holy Spirit upon him, remember when he was baptized? He is our hope. And he comes not only to bring hope, not only that hope rides in, but he should be our hope. Now I'm at, Mac, at, excuse me, at Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. And just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. Now, let's slow down for just a sec. Can you imagine? You have followed the Savior for three years, they say. Maybe more than that, maybe three and a half. Three years, they followed the Savior. And there's these two disciples, these two followers. Now, they're not named right here, so I'm not sure. Maybe they were some of the other followers because Jesus always had a crowd. And two of them were told, go into town, ready? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it in my head. Go, I want you guys to go in. And as soon as you see this place, I'm going to tell you right where to go. I want you to go to this place. There's a colt that's never been ridden. That part freaks me out. Colt that's never been ridden. I want you to steal it. <laughs> that's not it. But that, doesn't that sound like it? When you read the scripture, it like, sounds like he's telling them to go and steal a colt. Well, we've got to read a little farther because you're going to have a greater understanding. But some of this is just phenomenal. I want you, when you go in, you'll find a colt. Not go looking for one. You'll find one. One that's never been ridden. Untie it and bring it to me. And I'll tell you what, this is how it keeps going. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and we'll send it back here shortly. So it's like a borrowing thing. But do you, can, he's, these, guys, these two guys are given a detailed thing of what to do. Can you talk about hope? You got to hope that Jesus is absolutely right. When we enter, we're going to find this, this cult that's never been ridden. We're going to find it. I hope we do. He's asked us to. I hope we do. We're going to probably, if we get asked, we have a, a certain sentence we have to say. I hope they listen to the sentence. Do you understand what I'm saying? I hope they hear what we're saying, that the Savior needs it, and we'll bring it back shortly. So what do they do? I know that they understand, and they believe, and they hope. They went and found a colt outside, the, outside in the street, tied at a doorway as they untied it i know you guys can guess what happened some people standing there asked what are you doing untying that colt they answered as jesus had told them which would be what the savior needs it and we will bring it back shortly so they let me give it to you. so they told them exactly what jesus said and guess what happened woohoo the people let them take the colt they, of course, we knew that, didn't we? Because we know the story. <laughs> they answered as Jesus had, to, excuse me, let me go back to verse seven. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks or their garments over it, he sat on it. This colt has never been rid, ridden. Many people spread their cloaks or their garments on the road while others spread branches they had cut from the fields on the road. Those who went ahead and those who followed. So now you got a bookend, ready? You have the Savior and those that are with him and a cult that has never been ridden. And you have people laying out the red carpet. That's how I always think of it as the red carpet. They're throwing stuff for the cult to walk on, for the king to come in riding into town. Better yet, for hope to ride in and the bookends in the back they're singing in the back and shouting in the front they're singing and shouting and it goes just like this hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord blessed is the coming kingdom of our father david hosanna in the highest 
Jesus entered Jerusalem, went into the temple courts, and he looked around at everything. But since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the 12. When you read the Gospels, you will see that the stories might have a little bit of extra things in it, but it all comes to the meat. The meat is this. The Savior makes a plan, lay, knows the plan, lays the plan out to individuals. They follow, hoping along with what's happening, and see everything that Jesus said happen. That does to us, when you know what God has done in your life, it, 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 it cements that hope. You understand what I say when I say cement? Nothing, nothing. Maybe it's better than cement. Maybe it's the strongest thing on the planet that we know of. Nothing can break this. It's like, it's like Captain America's shield. Nothing. It's as strong as Thor's hammer. No one can do it because it's the Savior who has it for us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I'm going to close right now. Pastor Mark, come on. You can come up here and sit with me. I do have a couple things, but we are closing. I love the story. To me, it is hope rides in. It is hope that whatever he has promised will continue. Guess what? It's cemented because I know God will always keep his promises. Why? Because my God is not a liar. Jesus has proved it. I have hope in Jesus, and I hope you do too, for this. Because he forgives, and he transforms us into the likeness of him. Meaning this, when you say you're a follower of Jesus Christ, there are things that are laid out for us to have an understanding. What does that really mean? When pastor talks about holiness and righteousness and sanctification and being set, the easiest thought process, being set apart. You have the world that's like this and you have Jesus that's like this. Jesus takes you from this and he puts you like this. That means you need to do your part to follow and be Christ-like. That's what the scriptures say. I know we have our problems, but do you stop what you're supposed to do because you have a problem? No. Jesus, please forgive me and help me transform into that likeness. You know this is my, my problem area. Help me with this to be better like you. Simple prayers. There's nothing on earth that can stop you. If you have faith, if you believe, if you hope, if all your eyes are like the kids are focusing on Jesus. <laughs> In 1 Peter chapter 1, it says this. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth, a new birth into, ready, a living hope. Through what? Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into the inheritance that can never perish. Talk about can't break it up the inheritance that can never perish, never spoil, never fade away. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. And I'm going to add this, and for me. It's that you, is me. When the scriptures say you, guess what? You get to put your name in there. It, that inheritance, that end game, that end result is for you. Who through faith, ready, are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. I want us to have this understanding as I, as I close with this. We have a new birth. It is into a living hope. See, when I talk about hope rides in, it's, it's constant. I hope every day something happens that is, that is in God's plan, that I see it because God has the plan. He has the end result. God, I hope to see what you have for every day. God, may that be the living Jesus, which is the Holy Spirit in me. May that Holy Spirit be blooming, booming, popping, excited, able to make it through the most difficult time because he transformed me daily. I think sometimes we don't have an understanding of it. I think sometimes we don't realize. <laughs> it said, through faith, I am shielded by God's power. Tell me one thing that'll, that'll, that'll mess that up. I mean, that'll bust that up. What can, what can bust up God's power? Nothing. 
and you are told that you are shielded by it. I hear people talk, may there be a hedge of protection. Okay, may there be that shield that God has already said. You follow me? I got a shield over you. Better than Captain America's. By God's power until the coming salvation. See, you know, do you realize that God says, um, what I have, I give to you? And Christ made, Jesus made one statement that just blows my mind. You will do things greater than I have done. It's in the scripture. Look it up. You will do things greater than what I have done. I know he's talking to someone in particular. And I, I don't care who it is. It might be to me he's talking to. You never know. It might be you he's talking to. Can you imagine that statement to be doing something greater than what Jesus did down his ministry here? And we, we can't fathom it. Whoops. I'm shielded by God's power. It's with me all the time. Until the coming salvation. I'm going to tell you this. And here's when I talk about the end game. When I talk about that end that inheritance that is, that is waiting for me and no one can touch it, no one can destroy it, it will not even fade. When the trumpet sounds, every eye will see, every ear will hear, and every knee will bow down. I guess, <laughs> don't matter how round the world is, does it? Everyone will see the Savior. I want to be the one that has that hope to see him. I do have that hope to see him, but I want it to be the end result with him in all eternity. The world lacks that hope. Why? Because they fill it with stuff. They fill it with abuse. They fill it with addictions. They fill it with the, the, the pain and misery of illness that comes their way. They fill it, fill it up with broken relationships. And none of it has the end result. Why? Because they have no hope. After you've had so many broken relationships, I'm done. After you've been sick so long, I'm done. After you've had no finances so long, I'm done. I've fallen so far into addiction, I'm done. You know what? I don't know about you guys. I've had addiction. And I can testify that there's one who has the power to shield me from the things that were destroying my life. And the addiction is gone. I, I know there's, there's these organizations that you got to keep doing. The, 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 that's fine. I'm not, I'm not going gonna, gonna to say I know who the higher power is who shields me with all his power, and the addiction is gone. Why? And I'll tell you what, for a world that has no hope, our prayer should be, God, help us to be the one that testifies to you as their hope. That they too may go, wow, hope just rode into my life and decided to park. He is our hope. He is alive. We're going to talk about that next week. I'm going to just ask two questions and we're going to sing. Is the hope of Jesus real and alive in you? Is his spirit alive and at work in you? Do not feel hopeless if it doesn't seem that way. It's a simple prayer. God, I'm messing up on some things and I'm missing some things. I know you got something better for me. Help me to see it. When you got me something for me to do, help me to do it. And guess what? It goes almost beyond, it goes like beyond hope because he already is there to answer. There might be other, now I'm going to go another place. There might be other people in your life that need to know that hope. Show it to them. Let's pray before we sing. God, thank you. I thank you for letting Jesus, who knew everything that was going to happen to the brutal part of it, and always knew the end. And even as a man, even when he had questions, and, and they're passed down to us that he even asked to not do it, only if it was not in your will. Yet he showed us what following your will means. May our hope be in that thing that's eternity with you. May it be more than just a hope. May it be that burning desire to, to show others that hope. In Jesus' name, amen. I heard.
heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood atoning Then I repented of my sin And what the victory Hope rides in, there is victory. I'm so glad you came this morning to worship, to gather together. I hope you leave this place in a moment knowing that you do have hope. You do. Dig deep. If you're struggling, dig deep because I tell you what, it's in there. Let it, let it burst. Let that hope grow. And if you need a little help, join another brother and sister in Christ. Say, hey, let's just have coffee. Let's talk. Man, I want my hope to explode. Tell me about your hope. Tell stories. I tell people on Wednesday, tell the story. Besides asking them to come to Bible study. Tell the story. I'm telling you, when people find out that you've walked through some things and hoped through some things, they too might have that opportunity to go, yeah, I think I can do that too. That's a challenge. I accept that challenge of hope. I'm so glad you came. Wednesday, 5.30, like I said, come to Bible study downstairs, or you can join with that little blue line with all those numbers and, and letters and stuff you can go right on your phone i don't even have my phone's my phone's back there someone's listening on it right now uh, you can join right in with any of device and come into the bible study and enjoy a good time together in the book of chap of mark okay and so then the big thing right you know what the, i'm gonna tell you how the kids closed out ready they closed out with their games and their scripture and their uh, uh, verse, their verse is John 3, 16. They, they close out with this. Invite a friend to Easter service on Sunday. 
Okay. I tell people, you know what? The ones that, that, that kind of watch us and stuff, and there are other countries, uh, there are some in other countries <laughs> and other states. You know what? If you can't attend our church, attend a church near you. Why? It's Easter. Man, there's like, I, I enjoy every Sunday, but man, Easter, ooh, it's exciting. Okay. Come next Sunday and let's celebrate the risen Savior together. God, we thank you for this time that we have shared. And as we get ready to leave this place, let us not only be reminded, but let us be knowing that you have given us the Holy Spirit for each step that we have, that we, with the hope that we have within our heart, that we will be able to spread the good news, tell others about the Savior that brings an eternal hope that can never perish, that can never corrode, can never fade away, and it is there for each of us. Why? Because you loved us. In Jesus' name, amen.